Senator Tim Scott endorsed Donald Trump last night. You may be wondering, Senator who? <laughs> because most Americans forgot that he even ran for president this time around because on a national level, he really doesn't have any significance or any power. But this is actually a very big deal. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Here he is on stage with Donald Trump last night in New Hampshire, just a few days ahead of the New Hampshire primary, which is on Tuesday. I came to the very warm state of New Hampshire <laughs> to endorse the next president of these United States, President Donald Trump. I'll let CNN explain what the big deal is and why this is very bad news for neocon Nikki Haley, which also means that it's great news for America. This is all particularly stinging to Nikki Haley because it was just a decade ago, more than a decade ago, when she was the governor of South Carolina and appointed Scott to the Senate. <laughs> it is um, with great pleasure that I am announcing um, that I am appointing our next U.S. Senator to be Congressman Tim Scott. He earned this seat for what I know he's going to do in making South Carolina and making our country proud. Now, the reason that he was appointed back in 2013 by Nikki Haley is because she was the governor and then the seated senator, one of them was retiring. And so it's the governor's decision to appoint somebody until a special election. And then he won the special election. Then he won his full term and then won re-election again back in 2022. Just in case you're wondering. Tell us, CNN lady, why is this particularly embarrassing for neocon Nikki? Not only is this a snub considering their history as once allies, but the timing of this announcement is also what matters here. We are four days out from the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire, where Haley has been campaigning aggressively and building momentum. A source close to Haley tells CNN that she did not know Scott was planning to go ahead with endorsing Trump tonight. I was told by a source that Haley called Senator Scott actually in recent days to ask for his endorsement. Too bad it's time for every Republican member of Congress to either endorse Donald Trump or reveal themselves as a liberal. Vivek did the right thing the night of the Iowa caucus after he had a disappointing performance, dropped out of the race, and endorsed Donald Trump that very night. Senator Ted Cruz enthusiastically endorses Donald Trump right after the Iowa caucus, saying that the race is over. But it may be best for now that Ron DeSantis actually stay in the race. Hear me out. For another week and a half until after the South Carolina primary, which will be most likely when neocon Nikki Haley drops out. Because as long as he stays in the race, he will be siphoning votes away from her and preventing her from getting too close to Donald Trump in the New Hampshire primary next week and her home state, South Carolina primary, the following week. Because the only people who are going to be voting for either Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley are... Republicans or, well, I guess Democrats are voting for Nikki Haley who switched their affiliation for the primary, but are people who supposedly are Republicans and just are tired of Donald Trump, don't want him to have another term and are tired of the, the mean tweets and the drama and, you know, think that it would be better just to get somebody else in. And so Ron DeSantis is going to be siphoning votes away from Nikki Haley. You get my point, because if it was just Donald Trump against Nikki Haley, then many of the Ron DeSantis voters would then ultimately vote for Nikki Haley. And so we definitely don't want that. And of course, Donald Trump is ahead in New Hampshire in all the polls, reportedly 52% of the vote, which is about what he got in the Iowa caucus. Neocon Nikki Haley at 35%. So she only had, I think, about 19% in Iowa. So she is getting a little bit more. He still has a pretty significant lead, but the bigger the lead... More he defeats her by the better, obviously. Then, like I said, the following week is the South Carolina primary. Her home state, her stomping ground. And it doesn't look like there's going to be a problem over there for us because Donald Trump is beating her by 29 points in her own state. Also, last night, he put to rest any concerns that he may pick her as his VP running mate, which has been a rumor going around out there. It may have been started by the DeSantis campaign in order to try to tarnish Trump or the most likely the Republican establishment pulling strings from behind the scenes that they can't get to her to be the nominee and knock Donald Trump out. Then plan B would be to have her as his VP and then, well, obviously JFK him. But he put that rumor 
to arrest. She is not presidential timber. Now, when I say that, that probably means that she's not going to be chosen as the vice president. You, you know, you can go. Probably meaning a figure of speech, meaning definitely not. And this reporter from Politico, who I think is embedded with the Haley campaign, just posted that he witnessed her tell a table of would-be voters at a diner at a campaign stop in New Hampshire that she doesn't want to be anyone's vice president. That's off the table. <laughs> well, that's a deal. The elite are obviously extremely concerned about Donald Trump uh, becoming the nominee and likely becoming the president again. And at the World Economic Forum this week, which is going on in Davos, Switzerland, which is basically the less secretive Bilderberg group meeting where all of the elitists gather and kind of admit their plans that they're getting ready to roll out, where Alexander Soros, George Soros' son, who was taking over all operations for the Soros crime family, uh, said this about Donald Trump. It doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to play the whole thing because... Well, he couldn't articulate his concerns and just basically sat there and mumbled for about a minute. And one man, Donald Trump, literally came in and just took that, you know, took that, took that all away. Took away your plans. Um, you know, so, um, you know, so, um, you know, but when I see this, you know, when I look at this, um, you know, um, you know, uh, more globally regarding, regarding, you know, regarding. By the way, this is not like a meme. This is not on a loop. This is him just completely befuddled and unable to put together a sentence about just how devastating it was to these elitists when Donald Trump became the president of the United States and out of their concerns about what he's going to do if he wins again this year. And here is World Economic Forum puppet Yuval Harari, who is a big transhumanist leader. He's looking forward to AI writing new scriptures, he says, and creating a new religion for when it declares itself to be a god. And he is extremely concerned as well about the possibility that Donald Trump may win this election. Are you concerned that Trump might be elected again? I, I think it's very likely. Mm. And if it happens, it is likely to be the kind of like the, the death blow to what remains of the global order. <laughs> And he says it and he says it openly. That's all you need to know. If this little goblin doesn't want Donald Trump to become the next president because he thinks that it's gonna foil their plans, then you need Donald Trump to become the president. Here he is calling us little people who are gonna refuse to plug a neural interface into our brain in order to merge with AI and become transhumanist. He's calling us useless. So we may be facing in the 21st century a completely new kind of inequality, which we have never seen before in human history. On the one hand, the emergence of a new upgraded elite of superhumans enhanced by bioengineering and brain computer interfaces and things like that. And on the other hand, a new massive useless class, a class that has no military or economic usefulness and therefore also no political power. Take the mark of the beast, he says, or you won't have any political power. You don't want to be the victim of inequality. Or as the Bible says, you won't be able to buy or sell anything in the mainstream world economy. I'm sorry, but I would rather barter at my local farmer's market on Sunday afternoons for some bread, ham, some eggs, than plug a neural interface into my brain, which is exactly what they want people to do, and turn you into a slave just like Neo was in The Matrix. But hopefully we won't have to worry about that for a few more years. Right now, we need to do everything that we can to get Donald Trump elected as the president of the United States. And if we are successful, the counterattack from the empire is going to be absolutely devastating. But we have no choice. We have to go full speed ahead. All of this and more is detailed in my new book, The War on Conservatives, which you should order in paperback from Amazon.com if you haven't read it yet. Because if you like watching my videos, you're really going to love reading the books. A whole bunch of stuff in there, like I said, that I don't get into on YouTube for obvious reasons. don't want to get myself into trouble. And I would much rather cover some topics in a more detailed and thorough way than just talking about them off the top of my head. So head on over to Amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check it out. <laughs>